A couple of months ago I decided that it might be fun if I switched over to Linux for a while. Honestly, I was getting a little bit tired of Windows. Uh, I actually barely used my, my PC at all because I was just getting a bit sick of some of the things that, that Windows 11 does. So I thought instead of just letting my PC collect dust, why don't I install Bazai on it, uh, which, which I did and it actually gave my PC just a whole new lease on life. And I actually loved the experience so much that I decided to build an entirely new PC, like fully AMD, with the sole purpose of using it for Bazai, so that I can have a home console experience, but just, you know, using a PC and all of the cool things that, that come with that. And a couple of months on, I'm, I'm actually, you know, really happy that I did that. I think that Linux has come a long way, especially for gaming, like it's pretty good, but there are a couple of things that just really irk me about it. And the, the big one is that there is no HDMI 2.1 support for AMD cards on Linux because the HDMI forum are like just dodgy and they don't, it's not like an open source thing and they, you know, there's like licensing issues and stuff. So that means that you're basically limited as far as HDMI output. And the problem that I was running into is that whilst, yeah, you can do like 4K at 120 FPS, it's using subsampling in order to get to that frame rate. So then you have to sort of drop it down to 4K 60 Hertz, which is fine. I've got an RX 9070. Most games are not really gonna be, you know, doing super high frame rate numbers or anything. But even at 4K 60, it's still only an 8-bit output. So yeah, we're getting 444 chroma. There's not a lot of banding, color banding or anything like that, but it's still only 8-bit, which means that if I want to do HDR gaming, I'm basically relying on my TV's built-in, like it's called like frame rate control, and it basically sort of mimics um, HDR10. It sort of uh, fills in the gaps, if you will to upscale an 8-bit output into a 10-bit one. So I wasn't very happy with the the picture quality. And I mean, yeah, you can swap down, you can go down to like 1440p, but if you know anything about 4K monitors and TVs, it's that 1440p doesn't scale directly. And another thing is that a lot of people say that, that if you buy a DisplayPort to HDMI adapter, then you, you might have some luck getting the full like HDMI 2.1 features. But you know what? I tried like three separate cables. I tried the Cable Matters cable. I tried their, I tried their little adapter dongle as well. And I tried some other like no name brand as well. And I just, I couldn't get it to work. I couldn't get the DisplayPort to HDMI cable to work reliably. So, you know, I thought about it for a bit and as much as I was really hesitant to do this, I thought, why don't I just reinstall Windows and see how I get on with it. If I'm having problems, I can just reinstall Bazai and then bite the bullet. I don't have any Windows devices in my home, right? And I had to look up a tutorial and it was a great tutorial and I'll link it in the, in the description because it, you know, it really helped me out. But it was a tutorial about how to get a Windows installation on Mac. And it's, it's really as simple as downloading the ISO and then burning it to the USB stick. But then ironically, when you plug it in to the PC, it uses Linux to create the Windows installation media, which, which I found kind of funny. But yeah, installation was perfectly fine. It went, it went pretty smoothly. I didn't run into any problems. And I thought, great, this is exactly how I remember it. Windows is pretty plug and play, right? No, that is so wrong. There is There are so many things about Windows when you do a fresh installation that you really have to be aware of. So Windows does its best to install all the drivers that you might need, but I quickly found that, especially a lot of my motherboard drivers, like my LAN drivers and even my like HD audio drivers is that they were like a year or two out of date. So I had to go back and, and install the drivers and stuff. But once that was all done, and once I had everything working, the Wi-Fi was working, all of that, it was fine. It was it was okay for like a day or two. And yeah, I was getting the full, full RGB, 10-bit color, just completely perfect picture quality. 
But then I ran into my biggest enemy and one of the biggest reasons why I decided to stop using Windows and that was the Windows updates. They are relentless. I mean, I swear, sometimes, even back in the day, I, I swear, if I paused the updates, they would still just they would still just update for some reason. I kept being told that the, because the Windows installation that I had was using 23H2, which is, you know, that was the title update for 2023. And I was told that the 23H2 versions are, you know, support is going to be dropped in October. So I thought, well, I'll just move over to 24H2 for now then. And that was a big mistake because as soon as my PC was completely up to date, it was pretty much broken. Like, I don't have any footage for this, but you have to trust me here. There are loads of people online talking about this, but, but Windows added Dolby Vision support on the most recent update that they've done. And that's cool. Dolby Vision is cool. I don't tend to use it because my TV is a bit dodgy with Dolby Vision, but so, uh, but as soon as I installed it, the picture output was like, it, it was just like green and purple. So I was completely freaking out. I thought, oh my God, something's happened to my GPU or something like that. So I looked it up and yeah, it seems to be a problem with the in, built in Windows 11 implementation of Dolby Vision. It's just broken on some displays, which it's just so weird. Like that's an actual stable update and it doesn't work. It's just broken a bunch of PCs. So I thought, okay, well, I'll just, I'll just disable Dolby Vision, right? No. <laughs> if you disable Dolby Vision, then yeah, you'll, you'll, my TV works fine. But as soon as I put it into sleep mode or restart it, it's over. Like it just re, it just re enables itself. So I found out with a little bit of digging that on the most recent like beta build, they have fixed the issue. And by fix the issue, I mean that they have removed Dolby Vision from Windows 11. It was just, it was a nightmare. And I tried rolling back my Windows install, um, but it was because it was like sequentially updating Windows from like different versions. And it wasn't going from like the first version that I had installed to the newest version. It was like incrementally updating them. I just, it just wouldn't work. So I had to install I had to sign up for the Windows Insider program. Thankfully, the Dolby Vision stuff is done. Um, it, it's no longer an issue on my TV because Dolby Vision just doesn't exist anymore until they decide to re-add it, which will probably then cause problems again. So that was just the whole issue. But, you know, once I got that sorted, I was sitting there and I was like, right, well, now I can actually just, you know, focus on playing games. My biggest concern was that because I love to play games on my sofa I don't like to sit up at my desk and that was the whole reason why behind why I decided to install Bazite to begin with was sort of thinking up ways that I could get Windows to work and then it just like suddenly occurred to me why don't I just buy one of those like laptop desk trays that you just put on your sofa so that I can just put my keyboard and my mouse on there so I you know I went out and I bought that and I bought a little really cheap um bluetooth mouse but it works it's great i can now use my pc on my sofa right so now i have an actual like sofa setup for my pc right so now i can just play games the game that i have mainly been playing for the past week is um spider-man 2 because that had issues on linux i don't believe that linux has any kind of direct storage support so an issue that I was running into on Bazai when I was playing Spider-Man 2 is that if I was trying to traverse, you know, at a very high speed on Bazai, it would keep stuttering and it would keep loading and all of that, but didn't have any problems. I did have one issue though whilst playing Spider-Man and this really scared me. And it was that my PC would just completely crash and like it wouldn't even blue screen, it would just completely lock up and I couldn't even turn it off by like holding down the power button to like turn it off. It was just completely unresponsive. So I literally just had to turn the switch off uh, on, my, on my power supply, which is really dangerous. You really shouldn't be doing that. But that was the only way that I could, that I could sort of recover my PC. And I had to do that a couple of times, but yeah, I was really scared about, you know, bricking my PC. So I went into like the event viewer and it turns out that my SSD 
was just shutting down for some reason. It was specifically when I was doing like long gaming sessions. If I was playing for like a couple of hours at a time, then you know, Spider-Man 2 would just crash and destroy my PC. So I looked it up and it turns out that the Windows 11 24H2 update had a really strange issue with like WD Black SSDs specifically. And so I just had to install a firmware update for my SSD and that pretty much fixed it. Uh, I haven't, fingers crossed, because I only did this like two days ago, but, but I haven't had any more crashes or anything like that in the last couple of days. So fingers crossed it's fixed. I did also buy a heatsink for the SSD because one of my worries is because I'm running a micro ATX motherboard, the SSD is super close to the GPU. So I thought maybe the heat that the GPU was letting off was sort of causing the SSD to overheat. So I, I bought a heatsink for it. W one of my biggest problems with Windows 11 especially like a, a good year ago or so, was just the abundance of ads, all of the suggested apps and the Microsoft Store implementation and all of this just really threw me off. I hate advertising, I really do. And it just, it was such a nightmare trying to navigate Windows sometimes because it's so cluttered. But they seem to have actually like really toned down all of the advertising and stuff. Like it's still there, but you can at least disable adverts in the start menu for example and i don't remember being able to do that beforehand i also upgraded my ram because when i made my linux gaming video a, a few weeks ago and i just want to quickly say thanks for the support on that video i can't believe how many views that video got like i'm super i'm super like touched by all of the support on that video and all of the new subscribers that i've got and stuff i really can't thank you enough but a lot of people in the comments of that video were saying that buying 16 gigs of RAM was a mistake in 2025. And yeah, there were a few people telling me that I should have got 32 gigs of RAM, but I didn't actually see much of an issue on Bazite because the operating system itself doesn't actually use that much memory. Like it's not very power hungry compared to Windows. But one of the things that I noticed immediately on Windows 11 was that it just, it eats memory. Like, I'm not kidding. It uses like six gigs of RAM just on a fresh launch, just straight up. It's using six gigs of RAM. And that's just crazy to me. That That's like, you know, if I've only got 16 gigs, that gives me 10 gigs left. So that's really not enough RAM. So I went out and I went to like my local CEX and say what you will about CEX, but when it comes to like PC components, they're actually pretty decent. And I managed to get a couple of 16 gig sticks of RAM and I made sure that they were the same brand and they're actually also the same. I'm pretty sure that they are part of the same kit. I mean, it makes sense if they've got two separate sticks of RAM that are the exact same make and type of RAM, then they likely were sold as a kit. They're just selling them separately for some reason. So I got pretty lucky with that. I, I ended up selling a game and I, I ended up only paying 19 quid for 32 gigs of RAM, which I think you know, that was insane. Um, but yeah, now that I've actually like, I think I'm done as far as setting it up is concerned. And as far as, as far as my PC is concerned, you know, I've got enough RAM, my SSD, I think I've fixed it. And so it's a much more usable and enjoyable experience than it was when I installed it. But it, it was a bit of a faff and a bit of a headache getting Windows 11 up and running. But now that it is, and now that I've been playing some games, like I've, I've been playing Spider-Man 2, I tried a bit of Stalker 2 as well. Another thing about Bazite is that when you use like frame gen, especially with HDR on, for some reason it was causing like this awful like flickering and it was just a bit of a nightmare trying to get frame gen to work, which is basically essential for Stalker 2 because that game was unoptimized like crazy. You know, using the AMD overlay, I'm able to enable FSR 4, for example, and like FSR 4 looks incredible, especially on Spider-Man 2, like it looks really, really good, especially compared to FSR 3, like it's 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 actually crazy how good FSR 4 looks. So, you know, I'm pretty happy and I am going to continue to use Windows uh, for the foreseeable future, I think, on, on my main PC. I'm not done with Linux though. I do wanna make that clear because I know that I've got a lot of new subscribers from my Linux videos 
And I, I just want to say, like, up front, I am not done, with, especially with Bazite. I have my old PC with my old, like, it's got an RTX 3060 in it. And it's got a 12th Gen i5 as well. I want to make a video about what it's like using NVIDIA cards on Linux, for example, because it has a bit of a reputation, you know. So I want to try that out. I'm definitely not done with Bazite, and I'm certainly not writing off Linux this main PC either. If if Linux gets HDMI 2.1 support and all of these like small little issues that I have with Linux, then I will consider switching back to it on my main PC. But for now, I think that Windows, you know, it's not perfect and I've had a lot of issues this last week, but when it works, it's a good enough experience and I'm able to play the games that I wanna play without having to worry about whether or not they're gonna run on Linux. So yeah, that's about it. I basically just wanted to talk about how much of a mess the Windows was to get up and running on my PC, but yeah, let me know what you guys think. I, especially I wanna know what people who switch, like me switch to Linux and then switch back for whatever reason. I wanna know what your reason was below. And yeah, uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.